Hi there, uh, welcome to another video from Park Owners Boat Sales. I'm Jonathan Parker and good morning to you because I'm here on the Hamble River on a really lovely calm summer's day to show you this fantastic Mary Fisher 795. It's a 2020 model. We've got it for sale at the moment. So come and see our website, parker-adams.co.uk to see how much this is up for. But I just want to show you um, the 795. Now we've done a number of Mary Fishers, uh, 795s included, and um, um, we, so you can see the same layouts, the same videos that we do on, on all of them. So I just want to take a little different take on this one. So we're going to show you uh, different layouts that this boat has um, that you wouldn't normally see on a walkthrough video. Um, so the 795 is a brilliant, versatile, small, um, eight meter boat and it's always been great at adapting itself to suit your needs um, to, for such a small boat you need to do this um, so I'm just going to walk you around the boat and just show you the features this has that normally you wouldn't see on a, on a walkthrough video um, so first of all though um, these have always been really good because um, um, the they have an extended platform on the back which makes them the 795 from the earlier 755 and um, so it gives you really good side access. So you get really good side access and then through a small gate which you can convert. But as you can see, we've got all the cushions out at the moment and this is in lounging mode. So this is sun mode, lounging mode, sitting with your feet up having a coffee mode. And um, you don't really want to mess around uh, moving the cushions in this, but Mary Fisher actually has a really good side access as well. Um, and a lot of people don't realize just from the normal walkthrough videos, it actually can easily just step straight into the boat. Um, there's no struggling, it's just so easy to get on and off the boat from the side access, so you don't need to bother messing around moving the cushions. Um, also, um, the lounging space is it's a really nice area to be as well, um, but it does obviously convert into a table, but we're just showing you in the lounging area now. But as you come through, we've also got it in first thing in the morning mode. So if you're having guests um, or you just like to sleep in a more airy part of the boat, um, you can actually convert the inside seating area into a second bed. I've taken my shoes off. You get a good idea of the size as well. And um, so I'm six foot and I can lay myself out pretty much completely flat. My feet are touching the end, so it's a good size and it is. Um, it can be a twin as well or a very comfortable single. Um, and you can sit up in bed and look out. You can also sit the other way because there's a backrest on there as well. Um, and I also like the way the, um, I also like the way the, um, what's it called? That's a curtain job. The curtain, yes. I also like the way the curtain fully fits around the shape of the window. Um, and you also get another one for the other side. You get one across the back. You can shut the blinds because um, there's a actually, oh, you can't shut it, you fit a blind to the top as well and around the windscreen. So this area becomes completely private as well. So if you are sleeping here, you can be in complete privacy and of course um, darker as well. So I really like the fact you can convert this and you need to do this on an eight meter boat because if you do want to have guests or you know you want the you want the versatility of a small boat, you, the boats need to have these adaptions. Um, also in the galley area, um, it's adapted for the seat to move forward to increase your galley space. And another way of increasing the galley space is also covering up the sink. Yeah. So the sink's covered up, so if you want the extra worktop space, um, but also you can um, cover it all over and shut that down and then it becomes back into a smaller galley with the helm seat. So again, it's just versatility. Um, also, there's a large cupboard under here as well and you know um, make it a large cupboard but they put a 240 electric point in here now the point of that is because um, a lot of these also have um, microwaves so you can fit a microwave in the bottom of here as well so you can not only have the galley up here with the single hob you can also have a microwave as well um, again it's a little adaption that they did um, just make it more usability just um, just more versatile more usability um, so a great little addition um, this one also has um, diesel 
heating as well. So it has diesel fired Wabasto heating, um, and then you've got the heating vents dotted around. Um, and it actually has a separate diesel fuel tank in the Lazarette. Now it's actually a stainless steel tank, a small stainless steel tank, again, which is unusual because quite often they're just small plastic ones, but a really robust small tank, another nice addition. Um, this also has the Honda 200 horsepower um, outboard. Now these do come with 150s as well and I think you can get slightly bigger than the 200 on here as well but the 200 is a really good option because it's, um, it's powerful enough for the boat without being too overpowered and not underpowered. The 150s can be guilty of being a little underpowered and a little slow where the 200s are just the perfect fit and it's a V6 um, small Honda lump so really reliable really robust little engine. And this also has a bow thruster um, which really helps with maneuvering so with the outboard and the bow thruster and um, it's a really good combination of, um, of usability, comfort um, and economy as well. Uh, but as we go through, the other thing that I've, we've done as well, the forward bed is again, if I lay down, it's a nice big single again, but it can be made into a double because as you can see, I've added this very small triangle, which may seem insignificant, but actually it then enables um, a more comfortable second, um, um, second position on the bed. So again, you can now have two people on here, whereas your leg would be falling off if it was just one. So again, just adding that small triangle makes all the difference from actually making this from a small double into a larger one. Um, and they've thought about shelving as well. We've got shelving here, they've got double shelf this side, um, and then of course you've got the mirror behind. So if you just have a look, there's a double shelf there, again for storage. And again, we've got a hatch above us, but with a curtain you can put across and even like the led lights the led lights are just like touch screen um touch screen touch touch button touch button touch it's not an actual button you just tap it with your finger and then you can dim it as well so you can dim it down and turn it off just at a touch so again it's a nice touch <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure we should do these early in the morning. <laughs> no, 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 I've not had enough coffee. Not enough coffee, not enough coffee. <laughs> right, um, and then of course on the 795, small boat, it's only a small boat, but you still get a full size head. And the beauty of the triangle is that you can still open the head door um, with it in place. And you can see in there that they do try and give you as much headroom as possible. Um, so again, for a small head, actually, it looks a bit ridiculous at the door, doesn't it? Look, it comes up lower than my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it does open up a little bit when you're inside. But as a tall man, you're still you know, a little bit hunched over. So it's probably a sit down toilet job, I would think. Um, but again, it's a, it's a nice um, form in here. Actually, when you're on in here, sat down, it's actually quite, feels quite spacious. And the sink's unusually big for a small head. So again, they're thinking of you using the head um, occasionally and then, but obviously in the mornings when you want to have a, um, a good rinse off and it is um, just cold water in the head though, so bear that in mind. Um, and then with a bit of storage so and the hatch cover um, has these small um, curtains over them as well. I wouldn't say curtains, they're like bits of material with elastic in each corner, but they work really well because you just simply click them on and you can take them completely off as well and just leave them hanging down as they were. Um, but all the hatch covers have this, so the, the, the top one in the front, uh, in, the, in the saloon, and then even the curtains on the side work the similar way. They all just clip on nice and easy. Um, it's a nice material, a nice finish, and they are blackout as well, so they do um, take the light out completely. Um, so let me, let me jump out of here now. Um, also has this carbon finish, gives it a modern touch. I quite like it though, it's textured as well. It's a textured carbon um, wrap, I'm guessing. I doubt it's actually real carbon. Um, I don't know why you need to save weight at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's just cosmetic, but it does sort of tie in with the black. I do like the black. The black, um, it looks smart, but also it's purposeful as well, because if this was white, you'd get a large reflection on the screen. And um, and just them thinking of doing this, because um, on my own boat, it's white and it drives me mad because it just reflects on the screen all the time. And you end up having to put something over the white to cover up, but this is black. It actually is really nice. Um, I also like the fact um, um, it's got that. 
I love I love knobs on the steering wheel. You know, um, I, the first boat I'm going I'm to interrupt now as well. The first boat I drove with one of those on the steering wheel was the Sargo 28 a couple of weeks ago, right. and it was a game changer. It yeah, was, just being able yeah, to yeah, yeah. hand on that and so cool yeah. the steering wheel was. Well, brilliant. that's it because you can not only you know because when you when you're at the helm and you're steering right, the problem is if you're steering. You've got to use two hands, yep. you, unless you try and use your finger in there, but then it's just, you've got to use two hands. So when, you, when you're parking, what's the other thing you have to do? You have to use the gears, yep. in and out of gear. So you're trying to park and do this while going in and out of gear, and you know, it's just a bit of a pain. But now, look, oh, that's, <laughs> that's, look at that, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah I love knobs oh. and steering, always recommend that you get one. You know, we've missed a trick here, John. We should have done a partnership with the company and said, and you can buy yours just here and add a link down below. I'm gonna sell Parker <laughs> Adams logo nice. steering wheel knob. Let's say we can give away the boats. Yes, <laughs> yes, all right, brainstorming. All right. Well, maybe it is good we do early morning yeah. <laughs> videos. No, I love it. I used to say it's the first boat that Sargo 28 and it had it. I was like, this, how does every boat not have these? They're so good. I think I'm most excited about that than anything else in this boat. I think we can, we can leave it there. <laughs> um, but it is a lovely layout. Um, stereo access, um, touchscreen plotter, which is a nice, which is a nice touch. Um, touch, touch. <laughs> um, which is a nice thing as well um, and um, the Honda engine I do love the Honda engines um, I used to run them when I used to do marine breakdowns and they were so reliable it was unreal they're brilliant brilliant engines um, this also has um, trim tabs as well and so it's got Linko trim tabs as with all single engine boats and quite high sided smaller boats um, strong cross winds the boat will lean into the winds it's always weird because it always leans into them and you'd think it would lean away but they always lean in um, and also um, single engine boats you tend with the torque of the engine it tends to lean as well so trim tabs are a must on um, smaller single engine boats really i hadn't paid much attention to trim tabs until recently and it's quite interesting the how technology has moved on with trim tabs the old trim tabs i used to know were kind of press the button and it used to take about 12 seconds to move up and down but these yeah. new are they, are they electro what are, what's the word to describe the new type of trim tabs are they, are they electronic or well the old uh, ones were hydraulic that's so right. you had a hydraulic reservoir that run a motor that basically pump the hydraulic fluid around um, so it always took about 10 seconds yeah. to go from fully down to fully up you could count actually if you wanted them to go from fully down to fully up you just go 10 seconds because yeah. if you didn't know where they were because the trouble is with trim tabs without indicators this one does a lot of trim tabs don't have indicators at all and because you never know where they are you don't know if they're like that like that <laughs> like that like that so you always have to go oh, one two three four five six right i'm in the starting point let's carry on um but um but these have got, not only got the indicator they work a lot quicker so they're more like five seconds because they're electro tabs so they've actually got electric motors built into the um into the arm of the tab themselves and all it does is just spins um it just spins a, a gear that just sort of pushes it down and pushes it up it's like a worm drive um so very quick and it's direct as well so it's very quick very simple and they're powerful as well i noticed some people starting to retrofit them as well um we we're in um, buckler's hard a couple of days ago and there was a Fant fairline phantom 46 there and i just noticed on the transom it had two lenco trim tabs which have been upgraded so they've some yeah, yeah well, you older tend boats to... changing now to um, to the, that I think so. Yeah, they're a bit simpler system because while, while replacing all the hydraulics and everything like that, you just whack them on, just a couple of electrical cables, and, and they're done. So easy to swap out as well. Um, and um, you can see the carpets through here. I don't, I don't know. I can't see these being Geno fit. No, they normally. I think the Genoa ones are normally like a sort of grey, greeny colour on these. Yeah, so. they're either homemade or it's like a, a different option because they do. Uh, Genoa quite often do quite nice fitted carpets, and these look like they've just been cut out. So it's either the, the owner's done it, or uh, or it might be like when you buy a car, you know, you can get like the cheap floor mats, and then you get the more expensive ones. Well, maybe, maybe he's done that. <laughs> I don't know. Or more likely, he's just made them himself. Um, but it is just a normal material, so anyone can do it. Um, there's a um, lazarette spaces. There's a fuel tank in there, and then you've got the small diesel tank. There's not a lot of room in there, um, but you do get storage under that seat and that seat. And, um, and the other thing that maybe you don't know is, um, so you get um, a bit of access, but this part, all the way around to there, you can actually remove. It just has a couple of finger bolts, and you can actually remove the whole thing. So if you wanted to do fishing, and you wanted more deck space, you can actually remove all this and you get a massive deck space so it always has the fishing in its roots because merry fishing now is very much um, designed to pleasure um, but also it always has the fishing in mind so even with that you get the fishing rod holders 
as standard as well. So you get those fitted as well as obviously removable deck space. So they've always got that in mind. Well, let me get the shoes on. Being that it's um, first thing in the morning, everywhere's damp. So I'm getting wet feet. So I'm putting my shoes on. I'm going to put back out. Um, but again, good side access. Um, the gas um, is under here, my foot as well. So that's where the gas bottle's stored. Um, but they are such good looking small boats now. Now they've, they've even like the decals, the black touches. Um, I really like the style of these now. They do look really smart. Um, really good walk arounds as well. Loads of room um, up at the front um, for deploying the anchor. It's electric anchor. It's got a um, it's got remote control in the anchor locker itself. Quite a big anchor locker at, at that um, for deploying and putting um, bringing it up. Um, and some people do actually have. There isn't any with this, but people do put the sun cushions on the front. So you, so you know do provide sun cushions. I don't know. It's okay. They're quite small. They're like some for very small people um, or for just sitting on, I don't know, they seem a little pointless. So I think it's the sort of thing that you'd get and then you'd never use them. Um, they'd just be sat there the whole time or you've got to store them somewhere so you wouldn't bother. But, but the Mary Fisher 795, brilliant little boat, great layouts, very versatile. Um, so for, um, for the money, for what you get for this, I think it's a really adaptable small boat and capable as well. So, so please, if you want to know how much this is for sale, come and see us, park-adams.co.uk. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you get to see all the other boats we've got for sale. But for now, that's the Mary Fisher 795, 2020 model, still under warranty on the engine, still got three years warranty on it. Um, so please um, come, and, um, come and have a look, book a viewing, come and see us. We're on our pontoon on the Hamble River. When you're passing, wave at us and say hello. And we got our flags up. It's really nice when people do that. We just someone just went past a moment ago. We've never seen before. We had a nice little chat with them as they're going out and just said they're going across to Guernsey. Yeah, they're on fair a enough. Targa 38 GT called Third Eclipse. So if you're if you're a subscriber to our channel, there's a little shout out for you. I hope you had a safe trip <laughs> yeah. to Gern, uh, Guernsey. Something else I'll just mention as well is Go on. That, um, we're talking about the Mary Fishers. Uh, we were actually just taking on a, another Mary Fisher, an 895. Yeah, the big brother version yeah, of this. We've got a blue hulled 895, which we've taken on in the last couple of days, which is at Universal Marina and we will be doing a walkthrough tour on that very shortly yeah very shortly yeah okay for, but for now goodbye and see you on the next one thanks thank for you watching.